All right, so big thank you going out to our sponsors and of course um, to Rustic Works Furniture Company for making this DIY segment possible. Now, as the billboard said, it's do it yourself and, and hopefully not destroy it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I know as my friend Rishi over here. <laughs> as you remember last week with Carrie, as he crushed the, the, the cement. No, no, the week before, the week the before. The week before when he crushed the cement. Good news is today he's working with wood, so hopefully he doesn't break anything. <laughs> hopefully right? not, Rishi. But um, today we are going to do uh, part of a three-part series for this DIY. And what I'm building today is a floating shelf with secret storage. So we're going to do part one today. And for part one, you're going to need a power screwdriver with a Phillip head bit. You will also need what is called a C-clamp. This is just to keep the piece um, secure while you do some work to screw in one of the braces. Uh, you're going to need two pieces. These are going to go on the ends. These are cut um, four, and a, four and a quarter inches across this way and one foot um, in length. You'll see how we use that as well. Um, this is the front piece. We actually won't attach this front piece today. Um, you will see in the next part where what we do with this front piece. But this is cut to four feet in length. And the natural width of this um, that you get from the hardware store, your local hardware store, it's um, five and three quarter inches. So they sell it as six, uh, one by six, they call it, but it's actually five and three quarter when you actually measure it, when it's dressed, all right? Um, aside from that, you're going to need um, plyboard. So this plyboard is three quarter inch plyboard. Um, I believe it's marine ply and it's um, very sturdy. So it's, it's good to use for this. The thing with marine ply as well, you also have the markings, the wooden markings that make for a nice finished product once you sand this down and you stain it and you finish it. This is cut to four feet in length and one foot in depth. All right, I, so I have two pieces like that. They will be the top and the bottom. Um, we will not put the bottom on today and you'll see why, um, but let's get into this DIY right now. So one thing I left out was this piece here. So this is the piece that is gonna hold it onto the wall. Now, for floating shelves, it's not that they are actually floating by any means of magic or mysticism, but they have a hidden part that um, actually attaches it to the wall, and I've made this already. What you would need for this is a 2x2 two two piece and a 2x4 two piece. Now, what you need to do is attach the 2x2 two two from the bottom, as we see over here, with these screws. I have three screws in. These are three-inch screws um, that are fastening this 2x2 two two bottom piece here to the 2x4. Now, you want to put it... When you look at it, you want to put it, if I can get the angle right, there we go. All right, so this will be your base, and this will be your front. It will, so this part here will go against the wall directly, and this part would act as the support for the shelf itself. Now let's get into it. So this will actually go into the wall. I have pre-drilled some holes over here. These will be the holes that would end up being the studs on the wall. So to start, safety first. So we want to make sure we put all our safety glasses on and you assemble your things in such a way that it makes sense for you to do it. So what I want to do is get to the edge here, ensuring that the end is exposed so I can use my C-clamp to fasten this to the table. I have already prepared it a little bit so I don't have to take much time on it. And what you want to ensure is that the end is exposed so you can then Clamp this on one side, and your brace will remain unencumbered. You're also going to need some one and a half inch or two inch screws. In this case, I have one and a half inch screws, and I'm going to need three per side. And from there, what I'm going to do is attach this brace piece. This is the piece I said is some four and a quarter by one foot. I'm going to go underneath. Line it up with the edge here. I'm gonna just um, place my screws in. I pre-drilled holes here, guys, just for the taking time into consideration. All I'll do now is just drive it. Again, having a clamp makes this much easier. Second screw goes in. Right, and then you want to do the same for the other side. So I need to undo this clamp now.
And I'm gonna free this, this thing up, so I'm gonna spin it around. All right, you no longer need to do the cam too much because you have some support from this side. So on this side, you could just go with your brace, grab your screws, and fasten that to the top piece. Then you'll see what we're gonna do next. Again, this is only part one of the three part series for this one. So what you wanna do is um, stay tuned next week as well because you're gonna see how you're gonna get to the next stage. So just before we go, I'm gonna fasten this here. And as, as I said, I pre-drilled some holes just so I could work a little bit faster on the show this morning. You're gonna have to employ a little bit of arm strength for this sometimes, but that's okay. It's okay to do stuff outdoors and to get active. Now at this point is where you'd want to, um, in your wall, actually put this brace. And what's gonna happen is that you are going to, as I said, I pre-drilled some stud holes here. You're gonna put it against your wall. If I could just step out a little bit and you're gonna drill directly through this. You're gonna drill holes in your wall and from there you're gonna put your wall plugs if you work with concrete and then your screws to go in here and fasten it to the wall. What then happens is that this piece, there we go. All right, this piece actually, hey Rishi, you mind giving me a hand here? I just want you to hold this up here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my friend. So what you want to do is make sure this is centered and you're going to put this over here. Rishi's doing a little bit of a limbo right now. Now, we have the bottom piece and the front piece to put on still, but we're not going to do that yet because we have one more thing to put on, which we'll see in part two of this DIY. So what's going to happen is that you're going to put draw slides in here on either side and we're actually going to make a sliding a sliding mechanism so you could actually have your secret storage so that front piece that we had over there the one by six by four we're actually going to put that on so there's going to be a draw on the inside here so when you close it it looks completely um concealed it looks like a solid shelf but you um could hide things in here and put um, things that you want out of reach of children for instance and um, it'll be a sliding mechanism. So for now, um, thank you, Rishi, my wonderful assistant. See, next, time, <laughs> next time I'm going to come well prepared, I'm going to take off my jacket and, <laughs> and, and dress like Harry to do this DIY, I think. Yeah, I'd, that'd be very, very welcome. I'm sure there are people out there in, who, are, who view us um, <laughs> <laughs> waiting patiently to see when Rishi comes and does a DIY Probably as I'll well. do something, who knows? Yeah, who knows? Maybe he'll break some concrete too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for part one of this DIY. Tune in next week for part two and then finally for part three. Again, we want to thank TNZ Home Improvement and Rustic Works Furniture Company for this DIY session.